you all have been asking and you all have been waiting patiently. Now it's time we leave the office side of construction in the office and we start talking about the core of construction, which is building buildings on the job site. So today I'm kicking off a new video series specific to field construction by introducing a new role, the construction superintendent. Let's go. Every single morning, millions and millions of construction workers of various skilled trades around the world are waking up and getting ready to build the community of tomorrow. These skilled tradespeople are without a doubt the backbone of our society, building the infrastructure and buildings in which the rest of the world use and operate in. Yet the average person rarely meets the individuals that build these communities. So when I'm driving down the road, I'm looking at buildings a little different than the average person would. I'm thinking about how every part of that that building was put in place by hand by some skilled individual. And not only that, I'm also thinking about how many individuals came together on a daily basis over the course of maybe a few months to even a few years and worked together in a sequence that has allowed those buildings to live and breathe far beyond those people leaving that job site. So this series is going to be dedicated to those different field roles, learning about who those individuals are, and also what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. For today, I want to talk about the one individual who is there long before any other tradesperson steps onto the job site and is still there after the last tradesperson has left the job site when the project is wrapping up. This individual knows the day-to-day -day details of the project, yet also sees the bigger picture of how it all comes together. This person works and thinks in both the present and the future, problem-solving issues before they become actual problems. This person is a doer. This person is a critical thinker, a motivator and a leader. This person knows how to build buildings, but more importantly, this person knows how to effectively build and develop relationships of the skilled trade workers who build those buildings. This individual is the construction superintendent, which is the counterpart to the project manager. Now, nobody is born with the inherent knowledge and understanding of what it means or what it takes to be a construction superintendent, because it is a complex and difficult role to step into that requires a deep understanding of how buildings are actually built. But I will say, if you are interested in becoming a construction superintendent without yet having that deep knowledge of building practices, because maybe you've not had enough time in the industry, there is another approach you can take to become successful, and I'll talk about that later in this video. So, before we get further into what a construction superintendent does, let's first understand how someone becomes a construction superintendent. Well, the majority of older superintendents currently in the construction industry have historically risen through the ranks within the skilled trades. I have most often seen superintendents come up through the carpentry trade because carpenters are typically on site throughout majority of the project, giving them a better understanding of the entire building process from start to finish, giving them an upper hand when it comes to understanding building sequencing and building techniques. Now that's not a rule, that's just an observation, as anyone with the key traits that I'll mention at the end of this video can become a superintendent. Okay, so these individuals work as carpenters or in any other skilled trade on enough projects to where they become competent in their role, and they're often offered a position of management over a small group of people. This is typically the next step in that process, which is known as a foreman position, which just means that they're running a specific group of people, referred to as a crew, for a specific aspect of scope. Now, foremen still sometimes work with their own tools alongside their crew, referred to as a working foreman. But as they advance, they'll likely work less and less with their tools as they transition further into leadership roles. Now, I'll cover this in depth in a future video, but it's becoming more and more popular for individuals to graduate with construction degrees or certifications and roll right into that construction superintendent career path without starting in the trades. These individuals will typically start off as field engineers or assistant superintendents or something similar. And this is great in the sense that these new superintendents understand the office side of things, but there's still going to be a learning curve that takes place through time and patience working on projects in the actual field. It's fairly shocking to most people as to how little you actually know about construction after you graduate, which is why I always stress getting field experience along the way. The smartest superintendents I've ever worked with were also the most humble people. They would always tell me that they still learn new things every day, years and years into their career. 
which is the mindset that allows them to continuously improve. So back to these foremen who are now gaining more and more experience through managing crews over multiple projects. They continue to carve themselves out as leaders until the next natural step after foreman, which is the superintendent. Now, instead of running a crew, as a superintendent, you are now the individual responsible for everyone on the job site. That means all of the crews under each of the trades on the job site become your responsibility. Your role as a superintendent then shifts into this high level of leadership and oversight where people are looking directly at you for answers as it relates to the construction project in general. So when you're new to the role, it's going to be potentially uncomfortable and overwhelming at times because you might not know the answers to everything as fast as people may need them. As superintendents develop over time and over the course of multiple projects, they'll start to recognize patterns and lessons they've learned from past projects and past relationships. And good superintendents take those lessons and look into the future to prevent those issues from happening on their current project. Now I've included the formal roles and responsibilities of a superintendent in the video description below, which will give you a further insight into some future videos I'll be making. Feel free to pause and check that out now or at the end of this video. Also, don't forget to drop a comment below as this is intended to be a community of learning and advancing knowledge within the industry overall. I don't know everything and at some point I knew absolutely nothing. So we can't build this community without everyone's help and some people's input. Okay, so when I'm thinking about the best superintendents I've ever come across, I think about where they put their time and mainly their focus, and I'm gonna summarize those into three main things. So number one, an effective construction superintendent has an extremely good understanding of how to read and digest complex construction documents quickly. They understand building materials, including the limitations of those building materials, such as temperatures or compatibility. They understand building techniques. All these items are intertwined and essentially the best superintendents have the ability to take the project from paper and can visually plan and execute the outcome of the construction project within their minds. Number two is schedule. Now the same building can take a year to build or it could take two to three years to build, all depending on the order in which it's built. So a great superintendent is able to not only visually plan the project from a paper set of drawings, they're able to schedule it out in a sequence that meets the needs of the project. They're able to focus the the efforts of the trades as a football coach would coaching a game or a composer would during a symphony. They do this through the short and long-term schedule planning that they prep and communicate to these tradespeople. These superintendents see the end goal and their job is to remove obstacles to allow each skilled tradesperson to do their jobs. Finally, the most important trait of a good superintendent is relationship building and communication. Earlier, I mentioned how you can still be a successful superintendent before you become a complete expert in the building process. Well, the best superintendents know that they're not the expert when it comes to each individual construction trade. What they do know is that the individuals who are working on their job site are the experts in those specific trades. And it's the superintendent's job to make those experts successful. They do this through good communication by asking leading questions on what these skilled tradespeople need to be successful themselves and providing them the best possible scenario for that outcome. Now, achieving all of these things takes time throughout years and years of relationship building and project experience. So the next time you're home or driving to your favorite place after a hard day, to the place you celebrate at, or to the place you are right now, I just want you to consider how many individuals spent their hardworking days together building those buildings. Beyond that, there was one individual at the core of it all leading that group of individuals to a successful outcome, the construction superintendent. So again, this was just a kickoff into the world of construction as it relates to the actual job site. So if you're interested in learning more about what a construction superintendent does, what a project manager does, or just learning about construction in general, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out some of the other videos on my channel. I'm working to build out a library of content to help answer the construction questions that no textbook is going to answer or provide. Along the way, you and I are going to build this community that's going to further propel the education within construction in general. So, as always, be better, build better, and bye for now. Aww.